So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Southern Iowa. I was gonna film this uh, video here in the grain bin for you, but I think it was a little too acoustic-y and not in a good way. We'll film it on the outside of the grain bin. And this year, or I guess I have a video for you that I am for the first time gonna be using a whiteboard and uh, answering a big question. And that big question is, can a uh, grain bin save you enough money in a down market to pay for itself? That's a really big question. Last year, if you remember, I did a video with you guys, and it was my first video, uh, our first year actually, with uh, the grain bin here. And we went through what all the financials looked like for the year, uh, if, if the grain bin would have caught the carry, make its principal and interest payment, and therefore the grain storage was free. Last year, we, we made it there. And uh, even though it wasn't a bear market last year, but it, it wasn't necessarily a bull market. We were in a down market, just not very quickly. This year, we'll run through those numbers again, and we lost a lot of value in both of our crops, a significant amount. And you'll see me going back and forth to my phone. Uh, that's to try and make sure that I stay on where my numbers are supposed to be. But anyways, we're gonna use the same principles as last year to see what the financials look like in a bear market year for corn. Um, the numbers will be exactly the same as last year. If you remember, I paid 82,000 for this grain bin. This grain bin, that included my three-phase power. So I'm gonna leave out my like uh, variable costs in, like, in terms of like electricity every month because I kind of have electricity figured into this bin. I have a 10 year note on this grain bin. That means that every year my payment on this grain bin is $10,000. $800. Same as last year, we're just giving you the refresher. That means per bushel on a, and this is a 18,500 bushel grain bin, per bushel, my payment on the grain bin is 58 cents. I'm going to charge myself because you can't put it in for free and you can't take it out for free. I'm going to charge myself just like I did last year, 10 cents to put it in plus 10 cents to take it out. So that means that my magical number, once again, to make the payment on this grain bin is 78 cents. So I think that means let's head back in time and see what's happened to the grain markets this last year. Don't worry, my handwriting is usually not this horrible. It's, it's, I'm trying to write fast, so bear with. And this is my first whiteboard video, so it's a, it's a numbery video, so you have to let me know if you guys like these videos, and then also let me know uh, what you guys think of my numbers and how things actually turned out, or what you actually think of it. So, looking at my phone here, uh, let's go back to last July, good old glory days. Cash corn, so we'll say 23 July, cash corn, was drum roll what molly what do you think cash corn lost last year four dollars no they were well, cash corn was six dollars and 13 cents last july so hindsight the guy would have just contracted all his corn last july he would have been right on the money we need to put the cash corn out there that way we can kind of see what's happened uh when we make it to july and we'll even get into august here as we go through this but that was so, so that was spot corn that means that that was old crop which means grain in the bin uh we could have contracted for november corn and we're going to contract november corn last july july 23 you could have sold and contracted your corn and this would have been a smart man to do this uh, you could have contracted your corn for $4, and th this is in Cargill and Eddyville, which tends to be a really good a bid. I guess you could say they have a strong base most uh, basis most of the times. So there's what your difference was, and that's where it was really hard to contract your corn last year when cash prices were six thirteen, which is a dollar a dollar ten a dollar twenty over what you would have been selling your fall corn for. So the question was last year is which way is this going to fill? Is it going to bring, you know, fall harvest corn up to the 613 or is it going to bring it down to the four, uh, 493, the $5 range? Well, 
let's find out. Like I said, we're gonna start back in July, then we'll go to August, and this is uh, 23, 23, 8, 23, 9, 23, 11. Here's our November, here's our special one. There's November for us, but we will roll it in because then we'll have things in the grain bin. So we will be at 23 uh, December, and then we'll roll into the new year at 24 January, 25, uh, 4 February, 24 March, 24 April, that's a horrible three, 24 May, 24 the year 2024 so if that's confusing june 24 july so there's where we'll cover a full 12 months and then we'll even look at august all right so like i said this is november corn except for when we roll past november then it'll be december uh and then this will always be the month this will be the middle of the month of that month so like for example this would be like april 15th ish depending upon if it was a if it was a a, a weekend or not depending on where that rolls in at like i said november was 493 so july 23 november corn if you were just trying to harvest it off the combine before you put it into the grain bin if you contracted it this is just kind of showing you guys what's happened in the market is uh like you can always harvest your grain and put it into a grain bin and that's really what's going to you see is that the guy that would have harvested it contracted it taken it out and shipped it in december would have been the, like that would have been your ticket for last year or if you would have actually like priced it two years ago in august we went to 4.55 that's a that's a pretty gnarly jump right there we lost 38 cents in that month for people that want to see that in layman's terms say you ship off a thousand bushels on a grain truck which is you're usually right around there you lost $380 per semi-load delivered to the plant. Then we have uh, September rolls around, and hey, look at us, 461. We gained eight cents that month. Okay, then we go into October, 480. Maybe crop wasn't as good as we thought. There was a lot of drought last year. That was the kind of the consensus that people were seeing is that it's like, hey, the crop's not fantastic. Maybe there's a little bit of it there. We got a little bit of a rally going on heck of a fall rally right there we gained 19 cents in uh october not bad I'll roll into uh november this is when corn is coming off of the combine we lose 10 cents and we are at 470. so 470 is our magic number for what the guys that were just taking the corn right off the combine and taking it to town and uh selling it then they would have gotten around 470 but they're probably going local so they're they're uh basis was pretty bad so my guess is that these guys were probably netting a lot closer to 440 ish probably last year that'd be my guess give or take a little bit now we have set our harvest price of 470 and that's what we're going to be judging on if this grain bin is going to be able to pay for itself or not this year and for fun just so you know the really smart guys would have contracted uh, December corn, harvest price corn, in December of 22. And if you would have contracted your corn way back then, uh, you would have gotten $5.96 for your grain. So if you would have sold corn basically one whole year ahead of time, you would have gotten $5.96. So we went from we lost basically a whole dollar even last year we lost a whole dollar so anyways grains in the grain bin we're doing tile and work now we are into december we're thinking about christmas time december middle of december we've got 463 corn that's minus seven cents from july to december this little gain we lost 30 cents in our market which is six percent basically so in between july when you're starting to decide if you have a corn some corn and you lost your and you've harvested and you now know what you want you've lost 30 cents uh a lot of it was earlier on in the year or earlier into the those months range but we did lose 30 cents but again we need to remember that 470 mark so grains in the grain bin years roll around and now we're into january so we uh we really start to take it middle of uh 
middle of january we're on vacation uh you know uh, we're in mexico guess what's happening when we're in mexico our market is uh doing some wild things we lost 38 cents in january corn is now worth five four twenty five cash corn is basically four hundred dollars a load less in between 2023 and 2024 okay let's roll back it let's roll into january into february the bleeding kind of somewhat stops we're now at 417 we lose another eight cents we start to have maybe a little bit of a weather scare here in march you know are we going to get things going maybe it's a little dry and uh, we see a little bit of a spring rally and we get some grain back we're at 431 that is a positive 14 cents going in the right way having a little bit of a weather scare really kind of a wet planting season comes in we're into may or no we're into april here these are wet planting conditions are somewhat good at the beginning uh and uh we gain some more sense now we're, we're starting to see a little bit of a rally that's uh, a positive nine cents we're going in the right direction we're starting to gain back some of this 38 cents that we lost man it's really wet this spring you know are we even going to get our crops in these are the questions. What size is the crop going to be this year? In May, uh, we start to see a real rally. We're at 460 now. Okay, we're, we're still moving in the right direction. That's a huge move for us. Plus 20 cents. We got to like that. Start to get into June here. The weather scare is really going on. It's like, man, is there how much pl uh, prevent plants going to be there? So we get up to $4.65. That's a plus 5 cents. And actually, the high comes in here in the later part of June. Our high comes in, and our high is $4.73 for old crop corn. So basically, it's $0.03 cents over this, what you would have put it in there for, if you would have sold it all on that day. Not that great. Well, then we get... Good old 4th of July comes around, and it's, it's these holidays. I should just never go on a holiday. You know that? It's, we should just, I should never go on vacation, because whenever you get vacations going around, things get real ugly. Good old freedom of markets. Corn crashes down to $4.10. In July, we lost 55 cents a bushel. That is, <clears throat> according to my math, that's basically 12% of our value in 30 days. That's, that's just, yeah, the craziness. Then to come in here into June, or sorry, into August here, we uh, kind of firm up here a little bit, and we lose another five cents. We're it's maybe bouncing up a little bit right now but not crazy 504 minus another five cents but basically 405 what did i say five 504. 405 sorry pretty much from there to there minus 14 percent basically 65 cents down of what you could have put your crop into the grain bin at but we're going to look at this where if you would have taken these marketing opportunities here and we'll put it in the best case scenario and we'll say we gained our three cents of our 78 cents. If you remember at the beginning of this video, I wanted to ask in a down market because we went from, if you would have sold corn last July, $5 to basically $4. So we've lost basically a dollar in our market. How can we sit, how can this grain bin save us enough money to still pay for itself? in a down market. So if you're following along with our math, we're looking for, we've gained three of our 78. So we are looking for 75 cents to still pay for our grain bin here this year. One thing that I have said and what really attracts me to grain bins is how much more you can harvest in a day compared to taking it to town. So I'm gonna try and run some numbers and these will be somewhat conservative numbers. Uh, chime in what you actually think your harvest costs are um but we're gonna figure on a 10 hour day of harvest which you don't always get 10 hours sometimes you're broken down all things go bad which just shows that when you can be running you need to be running not sitting at line 
and an elevator or if the elevator's closed plugged up so we're looking for 10 hours of harvest time in our mathematical equation because we're going to try and keep it easy i'm going to say the combine runs two hundred dollars an hour a lot of people are saying it's a lot closer to three hundred dollars an hour for when you're trading in combines on separators we don't run brand new combines and stuff like that so we're going to put it at two hundred dollars an hour figure in whatever you want to do we're going to put the grain cart that's a, a tractor that's running pulling a grain cart got labor in there burning fuel we're going to put the grain cart at a hundred dollars an hour and then my dad has three semis uh which puts our scenario that we're putting here really pretty good because if you guys didn't have three semis this scenario would look a lot uglier to them because if they're running one truck and it goes and sits for three hours good luck you know you're gonna get nothing done that day so i'm gonna put a conservative eighty dollars an hour on the semi times three is 240 dollars an hour uh, I'm going to fudge my numbers here. I'm going to add an extra $10 to uh, the combine because it's a whole lot easier for me to do the math, figuring $550 an hour for uh, harvesting costs in a day. So on a 10-hour day, we're going to say that it cost us $5,500 to run and harvest for a day. That right there is my magical number. Now let's talk about what we can harvest and then figure out what it costs by our running cost to go to a grain bin versus running it to town. So let me know in the comment section if you're following with me here, but we're going to have that 10 hour a day. Our running cost is at $5,500. I can't believe I have to do this every time I ride on this thing, but I'm trying to keep it spick and span for you guys. High quality whiteboard. <laughs> High quality whiteboarding. Realistically, if that combine's running for us, I can try and harvest around 2,500 bushels an hour. That really doesn't happen. So I'm going to try and say more or less what we actually harvest kind of in, in realistic terms. I'm going to say that I'm going to try and harvest 1,500 bushels an hour. There are a lot of guys that can harvest a whole heck of a lot more than that in an hour. But I'm just saying with our little operation is that 1,500 bushels an hour, if we're pumping that out, maybe closer to 2,000, we're doing really good. Uh, but I'm going to just say 1,500 bushels an hour, have a real realistic, you know, kind of number here for you guys. So I could change these numbers so they look really good one way or the other, but I'm going to try and keep it as honest. That means in a really good day, I might harvest 15,000 bushels. I'd be very happy harvesting 15,000 bushels in a day. Uh, which means that per bushels, if we do the math here, that means that if my math is right, it costs us 36 cents to harvest the grain bin, harvest and go to the grain bin. We can take every single one of these bushels to the grain bin easily. Realistically, we could probably take away somewhere in the neighborhood with a 13 inch auger, running with three trucks I, I i wouldn't surprise me if we couldn't actually auger if we were really trying somewhere around thirty thousand bushels in a day i don't like i mean that might be absolutely in, crazy but i don't think it'd be hard to harvest har, auger twenty thousand bushels into a grain bin during the day so obviously if we're harvesting fifteen thousand, we can auger in twenty thousand. we have absolutely no bottleneck whatsoever so 36 cents is what i'm going to say it costs us to harvest running this it would even be cheaper if i could push this to 2,000 bushels an hour it, our running costs get even cheaper but we'll just leave it again more realistic so for us we're maybe draw turn, turning a truck uh, like a 30 minutes to an hour or so last year when things were people were sitting in line it was taking upwards of three hours to maybe even four hours to turn a truck so luckily for us, like I said, we have three trucks that we're running. So we could theoretically still have a truck every hour or so. But if uh, an elevator is open for that 10 hours, realistically, you're going to get 9,000 bushels through that elevator. So like I said, we got 36 cents here for our harvest cost when we're going directly to the grain bin. We have no bottleneck there. 
if you are uh, only running one semi, you can maybe harvest three to four K bushels in a day. And you want to divide 5,000 or 5,500 worth of operating or running cost by three to 4,000, you're, you're, it's going to be a real ugly number. So this number is looking as pretty as it can be uh, for guys that are actually shipping off grain when you got three trucks taking it away for you. So if we're going to take our operating cost of 5,500 divided by the 9,000 bushels that we can deliver locally, that equals 61 cents. 61 cents means that we are gaining 25 cents right there by going to the grain bin. And we are sitting at 75 cents. We're gonna take off another 25 cents. Therefore, we are now looking for 50 cents to make our payment on our grain bin. We are, that's our magical number that we are looking for. Now, let's talk about basis. If we're going to Cargill, usually at fall harvest basis, you're gonna be, you know, you can't even do that one in four hours during harvest sometimes. So they're usually around 20 cents, give or take, uh, 10 cents. Sometimes they get really gnarly, but we're gonna give them 20 cents the benefit of the doubt. If you're gonna go local, you're gonna go 40 cents in basis. So this is local, this is Cargill. So right there, if you even are just taking your grain, putting it into the grain bin, waiting for a rainy day or something along those lines when you can't harvest and you're taking it back out and you can ship it off, you're gonna gain 20 cents just by putting it in, taking it out, and going over to a better a place that can pay you more. Um, problem is, is that we're not close to Cargill. Cargill will run short hours during harvest too, so they're not open very long during harvest because they're getting a lot of corn and stuff like that. So you're good luck getting them to be there for the full 10 days, unless it's bean harvest, or the 10 hours, unless it's like bean harvest or something like that, then they might be open. Anyways, we're gonna take off another 20 cents towards our payment here. And we are now looking for 30 cents to make our payment. Here's the problem. I've run out of ways to make money with this grain bin in terms of actual cash. So now you gotta look at all the other things that a grain bin does for you. So here's where we're gonna try and find that 30 cents in values that I can't find a way of really putting a good number on and translate it to you. First one's gonna be what grain? Say, say you're harvesting some 16.5% grain or something along those lines. You have that grain view system in like we do down there. You don't have to run LP, a little bit of electricity, super efficient way to dry out your grain. And then you're starting to ship off 15% grain. Corn to town, you've dried it. You've saved yourself a drying cost. You've saved yourself a shrink and you've dried it very efficiently. There's value there. How much value you want to save towards that and go towards that 30 cents that one i will let you guys decide the other thing that we can do is hot is uh hydrate we've all been harvesting soybeans and you get them in there and they're 10 percent pinging off the window maybe maybe you can't get them quite to 13 percent to ship off maybe you can get them to 12 percent you've packed weight into that 12 percent from that 10 percent you're gonna get paid more because you're shipping off more bushels because you're shipping off more weight. There's value in that. There's gonna to have to be a lot smarter mathematician to tell me how much that is. But in between those two, to answer that question that I stated at the very beginning of the video is even in a down market, how does a grain bin save you money to pay for itself? One of those two absolutely will help you out. The next big one, and I'll even write it really big for you this is it right there time how uh how much time does this grain bin save you maybe you get done earlier if you can get done in the field earlier heart done with harvest earlier for me the big one that i'm going to be doing I, you know it, immediately as soon as we're done with harvest is i'm going to start doing tile sooner I can get done, the more tile I get put in the ground, the more tile in the ground I get, the better crops I grow from year to year, the more money I can put in the pocket. The other thing you guys will start doing, fertilizer. You'll have more days to do fertilizer. The next thing you can do, and, and if you're doing fertilizer, we'll tie that one in with tillage. We're not big fall tillers, but there are fall tillers out there. 
So these guys, you'll be pulling anhydrous ammonia, doing fall tillage. Basically what that's saying right there is you're setting yourself up for the next crop. How much money is that gonna be worth? This year we had a wet spring when things came in. Lights are turning on for us. We had a wet spring. Fields that were ready to go, fertilized, tilled, everything along those lines. When you were able to get your crop in the ground and timely, that brought in a lot of value this year. How much of that do you want to actually continue towards your 30 cents? The next thing that people are going to put out is, and I need to talk about that's really big, is that I do have that payment of $10,800 on this grain bin. Of this payment, $10,800. See this stuff right here? That's steel. I'm paying for an actual asset. About 70% of that payment goes towards something that I will own in 10 years. In 10 years, this pay asset will pay me back significantly and these numbers start to look really, really nice. So if you want to say that, I'm basically making a payment. Yep, I'm, I'm forfeiting some interest. And yep, the grain bin does depreciate, but what we'll talk about next about that is, uh, and there will be some maintenance costs and things along those lines, but I am paying for an asset with this. Not necessarily 100%, it's all an expense. There, there's an asset that I'm paying for, and in the future will help me out significantly. So if it doesn't completely pay its own way, I'm still gaining an asset. It's not like uh, a chemical that you spray, and if it doesn't pay for you that one year, you guess what, it, it's not there. This gal's here until she's not. Next thing we're going to be talking. Next thing that we need to talk about, and like I said, it depreciates. So tax implications of owning a grain bin. I get to put on my Schedule F. What does that mean? I can depreciate the schedule, this grain bin, put it against, uh, put it against income to offset my tax liability. So paying for an asset, offsetting some income. Uh, building the infrastructure I need or I see that I need to farm. The next thing that you can do is that we can carry over income from one year to the other. When the corn is in a grain bin, it's not income. So if you're growing it in 23 and maybe you don't want to go buy something, you know, or you don't have any depreciation, you don't want to do that. Well, guess what? When it hits 24, you can then take it out and bring your in income in. So you have income management. Yes, you can defer your payments and things along those lines, but it does help you manage your revenues by having a grain bin. So let's wrap this up as, like I said, the lights are coming in. This year, we were looking for 78 cents to make my payment on the grain bin. It was a horrible year in the markets. Um, we would did have the opportunity to capture the three cents if we would have sold stuff later on. So then we were at 75 cents coming in here. So we know we were looking for 75 cents for our payment. Then we started to talk about putting the grain into the grain bin to harvest. We figured that we were looking at maybe saving ourselves somewhere around 25 cents a bushel by putting it into a grain bin uh, in terms of time and taking it to town and things along those lines. So then we are now at 50 cents that we were looking for this year to make our payment on our grain bin. Then we started to talk about basis. We talked about, you know, nearby basis isn't very good. And if you can ship it off to a little longer away and make that haul, yeah, you're going to have some more hauling expenses. But we figured, hey, guess what? We think we can capture another 20 cents off of that. And now we're looking for 30 cents to make the payment on this grain bin. That's where my numbers ran out. So then we started talking about, can we save on our dry cost slash shrink with grain view? My answer is yes. You put your number in there. The next question that I had is how much is that time worth in terms of doing tile, tile, fertilizer, tillage, 
in preparation of next year's crop or maybe you know being able to go to family events and stuff like that and be part of family instead of missing thanksgivings and stuff like that because your crop's still standing in the field another one that we did not talk about what i will mention here is the sooner you get done the less likelihood of a chance that a big wind comes through and your crop lodges and things along those lines so we can say that down crop probably talk to anybody that's harvested derecho corn figure out how much the down crop actually cost you last value of having this grain bin is taxes so we didn't go from four dollars and fifty cents corn put it in the grain bin this year and come out at five dollars and fifty cents smelling like a smart man it went the wrong way for us but even i believe in the downwards market that a grain bin in my opinion so in all that considered and running this whiteboard out of whiteboarding I believe that a grain bin can save you money to pay for self in a down market. I'm still a firm believer that grain bins tile are two of the best investments that a young farmer can make probably fall behind with a good planter it just goes to show when you learn corn can lose a dollar and the grain bin still be a good deal that's a great thing so thank you for gsi for partnering with us to sponsor this video and uh we will be at the farm progress show probably at the gsi booth every now and then too might catch us there. Molly will be there with me. So thanks guys. Catch you in the next one.